Is the Missouri River the longest river in the country, or is it just a tributary of the Mississippi? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we could we could discuss this with the Mississippi guys all you want, but the Missouri River is the longest river in uh, in the country. It's uh, about twenty miles longer than the Missouri Mississippi River. And it would be even longer if the Corps hadn't cut 75 miles out of it. So, uh, so we, we gave them a fighting chance uh, yeah. there. Uh, it is the longest river. And uh, it, uh, I think it's probably one of the most diverse watersheds uh, that you'll find anywhere on the planet, yeah, really. So. Uh, it's from geologically, geographically, hydrologically, yeah. it's very diverse. It's a river of thirds. The lower... Uh, uh, 735 miles of the river itself is channelized into a self-scouring navigation channel. That's the that's one of the thirds. The other third is about a third of the river's length is impounded in reservoirs, uh, mostly in Missouri uh, Corps of Engineers mainstream reservoirs. There's a few other privately owned uh, reservoirs in Montana, and then the other third is um, quasi natural, mm. as far as particularly from a river. Uh, uh, channel point of view. Of course, the hydrology is no longer uh, anywhere near natural, but uh, that's why it's a river of thirds. Yeah. Garrison, Oahe, and Fort Peck are the third, fourth, and fifth largest storage reservoirs in the federal portfolio. Uh, Lake uh, Powell and, and Lake Mead are larger yeah. uh, on the Colorado River. And there, there's a reason for that, yeah. that they're that huge, and where they're at. Yeah. You know, they're, the reservoir system was designed to serve its authorized purposes through periods of high runoff or flooding, as well as periods of extended severe drought. Yeah, they do provide a substantial amount of flood control for floods that we've seen since the system filled in 1967. 75 flood, 84, 83, 93, 97, 2011, 2019. (laughs) I mean, there's big floods that, while they're still flooding, it does provide a substantial benefit on an annual basis so so what percentage of the <clears throat> mississippi watershed and flow is the missouri well land wise the missouri makes up about 45 46 percent of the mississippi river watershed land wise so it's it's about half the yeah. uh, the land uh at st louis on uh, if you look at the long-term daily averages uh, the missouri river puts in about half uh, of course it, New Orleans is quite a bit less than yeah. that because you got the Ohio and the Arkansas and, you know, and those rivers coming in, um, but it's very variable. Uh, seldom do you have coincidental flooding right. or coincidental droughts. So, and when they are having a severe drought on the Upper Mississippi Basin at St. Louis, the Missouri River may be providing eighty percent of the flow, mm-hmm. uh, which is very significant uh, there. So, on average, we're talking about. Half at St. Louis and less than half downstream oh, yeah. on average. Yeah. But my understanding is that the Missouri has supplied more than half of the sediment <laughs> historically. How does that work? Historically, yes. Historically, the Missouri River supplied about 70 to 80 percent of the sediment entering the Gulf. Uh, that pre development. So, so, well less than half of the water, yeah. but 70 to 80 percent of, of the, the sediment. sediment. Right. Uh, which, you know, is. It's a lot. It was the big muddy, the uh, big muddy, uh, too thick to drink, too thin to plow uh, type. Uh, <laughs> was the was the saying. Uh, so it it was, and, and even today, it it's still a significant amount of sediment at St. Louis. Um, but through development within the Missouri River Basin and the other portions of the Mississippi River Basin, the total sediment load passing New Orleans is well less than half of what it was historically. And now the uh, Missouri River only puts in about half of that yeah. uh, diminished load, which brings to you when it comes to sediment management or sediment addressing sedimentation issues is that because sediment is not an instantaneous impact, right. uh, you build a project, a dam, a levee, a channel cutoff, the sediment impacts take time to appear and they take a long time to mature. So you can't point to an event and say, aha, that's, that's, the, that's the silver bullet, that's, uh, that's the culprit. It's a, there's a collective thing throughout the entire greater Mississippi River Basin when you're looking at sedimentation at New Orleans. You have to consider time, amounts, uh, the change in hydrology, uh, the whole nine yards. Because if you don't consider that, you may implement a solution that is really 
leads to a, another problem or a greater problem. That's an excerpt from my conversation with John Remus on the RSM River Mechanics podcast. For more of that conversation or for conversation with other subject matter experts on river mechanics, sediment transport, or fluvial geomorphology, check out the link to the podcast website below.